Hello everyone! Uh, thank you for joining me for another video of uh, story time. I thought this week we could do outer space. I love doing outer space things. I have uh, a real space book and then I have one It's written by astronaut Mark Kelly. He's a real astronaut. And I have aliens because I love aliens. So we'll start out with one about spaceships. Spaceships travel in space. Some have even landed on the moon. You can see this is the surface of the moon. Here. There's one getting ready to come down. Spaceships are important. They help us learn about space. This is one that's on Earth. This is a place that's a, this would be called an observatory where they can observe the stars and watch them. Spaceships have rockets. These would be the rockets here. These blast them into space. When these light up, there'll be all kinds of fire shooting out and it'll help push it up into space. Here you can see it. The rockets will fall away and the spaceship continues further into space. See these here will fall and this one on the other side will fall. And just this thing here that kind of looks like a plane, that's the space shuttle. That's what will keep going up in space. These just help it get up there, away from Earth. Spaceships are used for many different things, and some will carry astronauts. Here you can see an astronaut with Earth behind him. The astronauts do experiments. They help us learn about space. Some spaceships carry robots. The robots explore other planets. This robot is on Mars. You can see Mars has that red dusty soil. That's the planet Mars. Other spaceships carry satellites and they take pictures in space. So there's no one in this one. There's no astronauts. It just floats through space. Space shuttles are spaceships. They take off like a rocket and they can land like an airplane. So here's these rockets and that big thruster there. And this here is the actual shuttle, the one that looks like a plane. But these white things on either side of the rockets and this big orange thing. And this arm here will be important for, it helps it to keep it upright so it's ready to take off. But I'm gonna show you sign language, how to say rocket. And that's an important visual. That's the end of that one. So to say rocket in sign language, you can see how there's this arm here hanging on to keep this upright. So we're going to use our hand like that arm. This hand is going to be like this. And our other hand is going to be our little space shuttle. And we're going to take our fingers and cross them. That's the letter R in sign language. So then we're going to attach our spaceship here to that arm and shoo, rocket that's how you say rocket very good to say space you just kind of indicate space outer space to say uh sun you would just have sun the sun shining down on you moon is you now sometimes it looks like it's in half moon start moon stars you're going to point them out stars um, what's another one? Oh my i'm forgetting what else i was going to do earth i'm going to take one hand and grab it with the other one earth this is earth to say planet now we're going to pretend that our hand is the sun we're going to make the letter p which is like use your little walkie fingers and your thumb is there letter p and the planet is going to go around the sun planet. So there's some different signs. Sun, moon, stars, earth, planet, rocket. Very good. 
This one is called Maelstronaut. And this is by astronaut Mark Kelly. He has a twin brother. They did some experiments. They had one stay on Earth and one go in space and uh, see how space affected them uh, when Scott was out. Scott Kelly was out in space for a long time while Mark stayed on Earth. The space shuttle is set for a launch and the astronauts are doing their last minute training to prepare for the mission. NASA is sending along some special guests for this flight, and they're training too. NASA is uh, the United States company that sends astronauts into space. One mouse is smaller than all the rest. His name is Meteor. The other mice know he won't be chosen for this important mission, but someone has his eye on Meteor, and he's impressed with the little mouse's hard work. Oh God. The shuttle commander announces that six mice will be selected for the flight. He picks five of the biggest, strongest mice, but for the sixth spot, to everyone's surprise, he chooses Meteor. All six are taken to the new home, a special cage called the Mouse Hotel. The other mice are nervous as the countdown begins, but not Meteor. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lift off. You can see those rockets helping it go out into space. There's the thrusters, and there's the spaceship there. At first, the mice are pressed flat against the cage by the power of the launch, but then the pressure goes away. The other mice cling to the cage in terror, but not Meteor. He loves the feeling of weightlessness. Hey, little guy, the commander says. You're a natural, a real live mousetronaut. Meteor is taken from his cage and gets a tour of the shuttle. He can even see Earth way off in the distance. Here you can see Earth through the window. The astronauts are all very busy during the 14-day flight. There are spacewalks to take and experiments to conduct. But what can Meteor do to help? Then, while answering email, one of the astronauts notices the key to the control panel stuck between the monitors. When he tries to get it out, it accidentally gets wedged further down. This isn't good, says the commander. We need that key back. One astronaut tries to move the monitor. It doesn't budge. Another slips her fingers into the crack, but the key is stuck down too deep. One even tries pushing it out with a long piece of metal, but with no luck. No one can reach it. The astronauts are getting worried, but as they discuss the problem, a tiny figure has an idea. Being the smallest isn't a bad thing, Meteor says to himself. Maybe I can be useful on this flight. Maybe he can get down in there. Meteor squeezes his way into the crack. The space is dark and cramped, but Meteor spots the key and tugs at it with all his might. Hey, look what our tidy Fred has done, the commander says. He saved the mission. There's little, look at his little face. He's so happy. When the shuttle returns to Earth, Meteor is declared a hero. He's even given a brand new uniform and an official title, Mousetronaut. All the astronauts cheer and applaud, but Meteor is already thinking about his next big mission. Cute little guy. Not my last one. I love this one. Aliens love underpants. And I have an alien toy here, my spaceship toy. I love it. It makes noise. It's a little loud sometimes. But here's my...
<laughs> no, I have alien love underpants. I love all the different underwear you can see. I think it's on the back pages too. Let me see if that one. They got the pattern underwear and some big old bloomers. And there's some alien ones. Neat underwear. Aliens love underpants of every shape and size, but there are no underpants in space. So here's a big surprise. When aliens fly down to Earth, they don't come to meet you. They simply want your underpants. I'll bet you never knew. Their spaceship's radar bleeps and blinks the moment that it sees. A fresh clothesline of underpants all flapping in the breeze. See them hanging outside? They land in your backyard, though they haven't been invited. Ooh, underpants, they chant, and dance around delighted. They like them red, they like them green, or orange like wild pumas. And best of all, they love the sight of granny's spotted bloomers. Mom's pink frilly panties are a perfect place to hide. And Grandpa's woolly long johns make a super whizzy slide. <laughs> in daring competitions held up by just one pin, they dive into the long johns to see how many can squeeze in. They wear undies on their feet and heads in other silly places. They fly undies from their spaceships and hold funny undie races. Zoop. As they go zing zing through the air, it really is pants-tastic what fun the aliens can have with underpants elastic. They made a trampoline out of it. It's not your neighbor's naughty dog or his owner's funny game. When underpants go missing, the aliens are to blame. But quick! Mom's coming out to fetch the laundry in at last. Whee! Off the aliens all zoom. They're used to leaving fast. I think. So when you put your underpants on, freshly washed and nice and clean, just check in case an alien still lurks inside, unseen. I would hate to share my underpants with an alien. So this week, um, in your bag, you have a lot of different uh, papers in your bag this week. And the craft, it's an easy one. You have, you can just see the moon at the bottom and a bunch of stars. And then you have your sticker sheet. So maybe I'll put, um, you can see Earth. Uh, back over here. And... Back in this quarter, we'll have Saturn and uh, we're going to have an astronaut, maybe plant the flag on the moon. And we'll have another really bright star up there. And there's a little bitty astronaut. He's going to go stand on the side. <laughs> So you'll have stickers. You can put them wherever you want to make your sticker sheet all pretty. So you get the idea. Oh, this is a big one. Ooh, be careful when you're peeling them. They don't rip because like this one, that one's tricky. Make sure you don't rip that one when you peel it off. Sometimes it can be a little tricky. So I'll keep doing mine, and I'll hang, I always hang up the craft of the week so you can see when you pick them up what it looks like. But you do yours however you want to do yours. And you can pick up your craft. They're here at the desk. They're already bagged. And we'll see you next week. Bye.